Hey, good morning and happy Easter to you. A couple of announcements before we get going this morning. I want to first just say a big thank you to Trent Reed for putting all this stuff together for us and also our music team for coming and making the videos that you're going to enjoy uh, this morning. Uh, a couple of quick announcements just to let you know. We're hoping uh, to resume services as soon as possible. I know there's some announcements coming uh, by our governor in the next couple of days, and hopefully uh, he'll lift the restrictions, uh, and, and we'll just see what happens. Just to tell you a little bit about what we have been doing at, at Bethel during the time that we haven't been able to have public services. Uh, as you may or may not be aware of, we've had uh, uh, each week we're serving three hot meals uh, on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A lot of our church members are coming and helping with that and also helping deliver. Uh, it's kind of cool. We've been doing that for about three weeks now and have served over 500 hot meals uh, during that time. And so, you know, it's just one of the ways that we think we can help out uh, during the time uh, that we're living in. Also, uh, we've been able to buy plenty of paper supplies. And so if you haven't gotten toilet paper or paper towels and need them, uh, just give us a holler and we'd glad, be glad to get you some. I know not everyone uh, has gotten any of that uh, stuff yet. And uh, we want everybody to have whatever they need. A lot of people have been asking also about their ties. And, you know, it's kind of a touchy subject because uh, we would never want to come across as asking for money. Uh, we are plenty financially stable here at the church, but we know that worshiping through ties and offerings is one way uh, that people do worship the Lord. And so uh, if you would like, you can still uh, mail your ties uh, to the church address and we'll post that in the comments below. Or if you're on the meal train uh, from the Meals on Wheels program, uh, you can just give that to whoever drops it by uh, and we'll be glad to, to get it to where it needs to go. And so once again, thanks for joining us this morning. I hope you have a great Easter and celebrate there with your family at home and enjoy the time that we have together worshiping the Lord. All right, we're going to sing number 269, He Lives, the first and last verse. I serve a risen Savior, He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever I may say, the sins and the mercy I hear His voice and cheer. And just the time I hear Him, He's always here. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and walks with me. message this morning. I want you to take your Bible out there at home and turn with me to the book of Matthew and Matthew chapter 28 as we read his account of the, uh, of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Obviously, as we celebrated through the previous couple of days, we know that on Friday uh, that Jesus was crucified as we celebrate and that the Bible says that he was in the tomb for three days and that he arose on the first day of the week. And so we're going to pick it up there in the book of Matthew, chapter 28, starting in verse 1. The Bible says that now after the Sabbath, it began to dawn toward the first day of the week. And Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the grave. And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred. For an angel of the Lord had descended from heaven and came and rolled the stone away and sat upon it. Verse 3 says that his appearance was like lightning and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook for fear because of him and were like dead men. Verse 5 says, The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know who you are looking for, Jesus, who has been crucified. 
for he is not here. The place where he was laying, go quickly and tell the disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going ahead of them into Galilee. There you will see him. And behold, I have told you. You know, we'll continue reading in just a moment. But those statements right there, hey, are by far, is some of the best news that mankind would ever hear. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, fulfilled all the prophecy coming into his life here on this earth. We understand that, that we have a problem, that we have a sin problem, and that uh, the only way to rectify that sin was through sacrifice. But when Christ came, everything changed because Jesus Christ was the ultimate sacrifice. He gave his life as a ransom for many, the Bible teaches us. He died on Calvary's cross so that you and I could be forgiven. You and I enjoy so many freedoms today spiritually because of what Christ has done. Ultimately, because of his death and his burial and his resurrection as we celebrate it at Easter, you and I have a great privilege. And that privilege is that if we trust in Christ, that one day when we pass from this life, that we'll spend an eternity uh, with him. The Bible continues to tell us in verse 8 that when they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to report it to the disciples. Can you imagine that news that day as both of the Marys went to the tomb and there sat the angel of God? The soldiers were still standing there. The Bible says they were frozen with fear still, even at that moment. But as they came to look upon where Jesus had been buried, they found that he was no longer dead, that he was no longer there. And the Bible says that they took that news quickly and they left and they went back to town to tell the disciples what they had found. In verse 9, And behold, Jesus met them and greeted them and came up to and took hold of his feet and they worshiped him. And then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid and go and take uh, word to my brethren to leave for Galilee and they will see me there. And so as the two Marys left the tomb and went back to town, they actually met Jesus and Jesus spoke to them and he gave them instructions for not only them, but for the disciples. We also continue to read and it says that uh, now while they were on their way, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priest all that had happened. And when they had assembled with the elders and consulted together, they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers and said, you are to say his disciples came by night and stole him away while you were asleep. And if this should come to the governor's ears, we will win him over and keep you out of trouble. And they took the money and did as they had been instructed. And this story was widely spread among the Jews, even to this day. You see, the, the, the different religious leaders and the governmental leaders of Jesus' time were so afraid of what the people would do if they really found out who Jesus was. And so even in Jesus' triumph over death, grave, the grave, and hell, even people at the time was wanting to diminish the good news of what we come to know as the Easter story. This morning, I want to just ask you a quick question. And that question is, is do you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Do you know him as, as the Messiah? Do you know him as the one that lives? If not, the Bible is very clear that we're saved by faith, that we have to put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And part of that faith is believing that Jesus was who he said he was, that he came as a virgin birth from Mary and, and just a few number of years later was crucified. And not only was he crucified, but he arose as we celebrate at Easter time. I hope if you don't know the Lord that you will trust in him, that you will look to him. And maybe one of these days we'll find out that even through this message that you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. I hope you have a wonderful Easter. We sure do miss seeing all of y'all here at, at church and hopefully we'll be back together uh, very soon. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this day and Lord, we thank you for this wonderful day as we celebrate our risen Savior. Lord, I pray that hey, anybody that's listening, Lord, maybe they're going through some hard times in life or Lord, different things are bothering them. And Lord, I pray that they would just, just feel the peace that only that you can provide. Lord, maybe there's someone else that's watching this that doesn't know you as their Savior. And Lord, I ask uh, that you would show them who you are and that they would put their faith and trust in you. And Lord, we just pray for the days to come. We pray, we pray, Lord, for our leaders, for our governor, for our president. Lord, we just continue to ask that you would just uh, honor, Lord, the prayers of the saints, Lord, as, as this country goes forward. And Lord, we thank you for all that you're going to do. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.